A futures just dipping into the red now, kind of fractionally mixed right now. What, what do you make of that? I mean, we're just still digesting an incredible rally that we saw begin in late October, November, December, even here in January. It's um, it's it's great to see it. You know, it's a it's a, a result of the Fed pivoting off of a rate hiking policy. But maybe we're a little bit ahead of our skis right now, and it's going to be up to the economic data to determine whether this market's going to be able to push higher. Yeah, we're going to talk to you a little bit about earnings and economic data coming up. But first, I want to get your WEX word of the day. How do you see today shaping up? I mean, the theme, sticking with the theme we were just talking about, my word of the day is basics, as in getting back to basics. For this market to move higher, it's going to be indicative of earnings reports being better than expected. Not like last year where it was better than feared and that was good enough. We need to see earnings produce so that we can justify this market moving. We had a, a first week last week where we saw 60 companies report, only 69 of them beat, and that's not good enough. So we're going to have 70 companies coming out this week. Look at those big names. They've got to deliver if we're going to expect to see this market continue. Yeah, we're showing in the audience the, audit, the uh, earnings <clears throat> wall right now. I know one earnings that you're paying a lot of attention to is Procter & Gamble coming up later today. Why is that so important? What do you think that's going to tell you? Well, I think it's the first one before the bell that we own. We also own Johnson & Johnson and Verizon today. But Procter & Gamble is a bellwether. It talks a lot about the consumer. We want to listen to what they're saying about forecasts for 2024. They're expecting uh, single-digit in internal growth, organic growth. They had really good earnings last time. But like so many stocks, Frank, this hasn't done anything in two years. So for, for them to be able to produce returns on a total return basis, because they have a good dividend and a good dividend growth history, we're going to need to see them manage their costs, manage their supply chains, because the, the, the shutdowns from COVID are over. Okay. You can't just continue to raise prices to perpetuity. So I'm paying attention to this one this morning, not expecting a whole lot of movement out of the stock, but I want to see what they're saying their expectations are for the consumer for 2024. You know, you're talking about expectations, and earlier you were talking about some of the economic reports out this week. So Friday, I think we have the biggest report of the week, probably PCE. We also get preliminary uh, Q4 GDP. What do you think those reports mean to investors? Again, as we're, we're very close to all-time highs on the uh, record highs on the Dow and a 52-week high on the S&P. If you want to see the index go higher, it's really going to be based on the earnings, not, not so much multiple expansion. So how do you get earnings to go higher? You can improve margins. You can see multiples move up a little bit, but they're already like 19 and a half, 20 forward. So growth on Thursday with GDP. It's going to be lower, but growth is still growth. And then Friday, you're right. Like, that's the big boy for the week. What's okay. going to happen with inflation? All right, Kev, I want to get to some of your picks. Your picks are AI by acquisition <clears throat> picks, some mixed results when it comes to their stocks since they made those acquisitions. But give us a sense. Why are you looking at AI by acquisition as opposed to the, the names of the Magnificent Seven that a lot of people just consider AI stocks? Yeah, sometimes the acquisitions take time to, to build the synergies. But if you miss the big seven trade, if that's not something you want to chase after. And for us, and you know, Frank, we invest in dividend-paying companies. We want to get paid total return. These are three stocks, Cisco, IBM, and Broadcom, that over the past few years have made great acquisitions that will allow them to be participants in the AI trade while still having tons of free cash flow and returning that cash flow to shareholders. But every acquisition isn't built the same. The Broadcom VMware merger, the, the stock has been on a tear. You're showing IBM uh, quite the opposite. You know, they, they bought the Red Hat, what, 100 years ago, and everyone <laughs> thought that was kind of a square, a square peg and, and, and a round hole, but, but it's, it's not. And, and, and this is not the, the old IBM that we remember. This is really a company now that, that can progress and turn the AI trade into a profitable part of the business. So you're speculating a little bit less because you've got these old school companies. You don't want to not mention Cisco and the Splunk acquisition, but all of them are tremendous pipelines for cash flow. Got and it. these acquisitions, in some cases, finally, are, are really starting to pay off.